Hi, thank you for clicking on the video and I hope everyone is doing really well. There has been a craze over the past few years of more and more people claiming to be gluten intolerant or unable to eat gluten or wheat. And the facts are only about 1% of Americans suffer from celiac disease, which is the severe disease that if you consume gluten or wheat of any kind, you can get severely, severely sick and people can die from this. Also, only about 6% of Americans are gluten intolerant. So if you run across a few few people who say, oh, I'm, I'm allergic to gluten or I'm gluten intolerant or I can't eat that because of the gluten, you know, I can't have that. They're, they're just jumping on the bandwagon, uh, going with the trend of being gluten intolerant. Chances are they probably aren't. Know the facts. You're probably not gluten intolerant. However, people do feel better when they cut gluten out of their diet. Why? Because gluten is like glue. It sticks to your intestines and it prevents your body from absorbing nutrients efficiently. It also can slow down your digestion. And that's the other thing, is there are diseases that it is recommended that you cut gluten out of your diet to better your chances of getting well from these diseases and disorders. Some are, you know, intestinal issues, digestive issues, and especially thyroid issues. And that is why I am gluten free because I have hypothyroidism and to help the medication do its job, to help my body learn to do its job again, cutting gluten out is a really good idea because it just helps your body function a little bit better. Maybe experiment a little bit and cut out gluten for like a week or a month and see if you feel better. And if you do, that is great and that might be a way to go from now on is just avoid or eliminate gluten from your diet and a lot of people so a lot of people have found that the gluten-free version of regular food just isn't good and i will say a lot of it is not very good it doesn't taste very good and today i have assembled quite a bit of my favorite gluten-free products that I, I think are pretty good and are pretty good alternatives. So I am going to start with breakfast and kind of work my way through all of this stuff. So first off for breakfast, let's say you typically have cereal, but the cereal you normally have is made from wheat and or whole grains so what can you eat my favorite cereal brand is called love grown and they make all of their cereals from beans and lentils which is awesome they have a whole lot of flavors this is the original power o's which is basically like their cheerio but then they have chocolate ones and strawberry ones they also have kids cereal which are actually my favorite of their cereals i bought this one so it looks like i'm super healthy but i absolutely love their fruity sea stars and their polar puffs which are like vanilla and then they have coke like their version of like cocoa krispies and then they just came out with these lion loops which are like their cinnamon toast crunch but they're circular shaped but my favorite cereal by them is their limited edition halloween like special cereal which is their bats and booze which are chocolate and vanilla bats and ghosts that is my all-time favorite cereal you might not be into cereal but maybe you're into granola and some granolas do have like trace amounts of wheat or there is a wheat product in it and this is a gluten-free granola by Love Grown. Really good, uh, different varieties, different flavors. This one's probably one of my favorites, the raisin. And all their flavors are really good and I love Love Grown. If you wanna keep it simple, probably the number one easiest gluten-free breakfast you could make is oatmeal. It's naturally gluten-free. It can be delicious depending on how you make it and you can use it in all different ways. You can just eat it like oatmeal, you can use it in baking, you can use it as your alternative to flour. So there are lots of uses of oatmeal. Again, naturally gluten-free, 
super wholesome, a lot of nutrients, very good for you. So that is an option as well. I think the number one hardest thing to find a gluten-free option is bread. Gluten-free bread can be really, really disgusting. Like it can just, it just tastes like cardboard a lot of the time. It's very dense and it just, it's not good. But there are some good brands out there. So here are some of my favorite bread options. This is the Energy brand. They also make an egg replacer, a powdered egg replacer for baking. So if you are vegan, you probably know about that brand, about that item. But the brand itself makes a lot of gluten-free bread. And they used to make it, I think they still make it, maybe my store just stopped carrying it. They made a tapioca bread, which is phenomenal. But they're Rice bread is also pretty good as well. So this is the light white rice flax loaf, but then they also have light rice bread, light tapioca bread. If you get the light one, even the regular one too, they're very low in calorie per slice. So if I make like French toast, I will make this whole loaf and eat it all. And it's like, you it's not like you're eating overeating at all because they're such low calorie slices which is awesome because you get to eat more another really great brand is the little northern bakehouse and i have a bag of it right here my freezer has so many of these in it and this is the cinnamon raisin bread but they have obviously other flavors like just regular breads uh, and flavors and stuff not just like the special flavored ones so this is a really good option as well so one thing i would recommend especially for if you're trying to find good bread if you have a local co-op go check out like their bakery or their bread section and see if they carry any local brands. And I did that and I discovered Sammy's Bakery and they make some of the best gluten-free bread. Some of them, the ingredients list will say may contain wheat or may contain traces of wheat or contain traces of wheat. But if you look through the ingredients, there are no ingredients used that have gluten or wheat in it so you should be fine unless you're like severely allergic or intolerant to wheat then maybe this brand if you're able to get it maybe that's not it's not the best one for you but they have amazing bread they have sourdough regular like white bread they've got cinnamon raisin they have banana bread they have bagels they have italian bread they have dinner rolls i mean they have any type of bread really that you can think of, they have it. And I have been impressed by every single one. And then the final uh, thing I want to show you in the bread category, these are English muffins, which honestly, I eat English muffins maybe once a year for some random reason I buy them. And I guess that once a year is going to be right now because I bought some of Food for Life's gluten-free English muffins. These are made with brown rice. You're gonna notice because I avoid a lot of allergens, rice is gonna be predominantly the thing that these foods are made out of. But they make this one and then they also make a multi-grain gluten-free one, which is also really good. And then the last breakfast item I definitely would say check out is if you really are into like pancakes or waffles and I I am so I'm always looking for a good gluten-free mix for like pancakes or waffles because I like waffles more and Bob's Red Mill makes a gluten-free pancake mix and just just add water basically and you can just put it in like a waffle maker make pancakes this is probably my favorite but the Enjoy Life also makes a pancake mix that is pretty phenomenal as well. So let's move into kind of more dinner savory options. First of all, I don't eat a whole lot of pasta, but for some reason when this particular brand goes on sale, I just can't stop myself from over buying bags of pasta and then just having a cupboard full of brown rice pasta for that 
one occasion that I decide to make pasta and then yeah so I don't eat a lot of pasta but if I do I always get this brand it's I don't really know how to pronounce it but it's Tinkiata 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 I'm gonna say Tinkiata brown rice pasta and they have all different shapes my favorite is their little bunnies they make a bunny shaped pasta because their logo is little bunnies I don't know if you can see that right there but yeah so spirals spaghetti lasagna shells zitty all different macaroni all different shapes and then obviously the kind of go-to at least for me the go-to is rice just plain rice and you can use rice in like substitute rice for pasta if you've never tried it i really recommend like making rice and then putting like tomato sauce like it's pasta and i know it sounds weird but it's actually really good the other thing is rice noodles i don't have any for some reason i normally do have a box um on hand but i don't today but rice noodles are another really great alternative first of all soy sauce typically i believe does have like wheat traces in it but i can't have soy so I couldn't do like tamari as like a soy sauce alternative, but there are coconut liquid aminos. And this is the Bragg brand, but then there's another brand called Coconut Secret, which I like a little bit more, but the store I was at only sells this brand. And the Coconut Secret brand has a whole lot of not just coconut aminos, but they have like teriyaki sauce and like different sauces and stuff that typically have soy sauce in it but instead they use coconut aminos to make these different sauces so those are all really good and so Bragg or Coconut Secret are the two brands that I would recommend. Snacks. So again rice. Rice is like my best friend when it comes to food. So we have some True Goodness, which is the Meyer brand. I don't know if you have Meyer near you, but any rice cake is going to be amazing. I like these because they're unsalted, and I just don't like to have a lot of salt in my diet. So these are really great, but I mean, they're all different brands. Pretty much any brand, every brand is the same of rice cakes. I've never had a bad rice cake. So granola bars are something that I grew up eating and a lot of them have wheat. They're made with wheat. So this is a really good brand, Lara Bar. They make amazing flavors of these snack bars. Now, when you Google Lara Bar to find out if they're healthy or not, whatever, basically they show up a lot on like the don't eat the this kind of lists because they are so high in sugar but who cares about that because they taste good this flavor coconut cream pie is just five ingredients most of the lara bars are like four or five ingredients tops which is awesome and of course it's high in sugar because it's made from dates what do you expect like natural sugar so the people who are like these are so unhealthy for you because look at all the sugar get over yourself within the snack category i also have like protein bars and i discovered these like a couple months ago the go macro brand oh my gosh these are so good my favorite is the caramel one but all of them they kind of have this it's like a toffee flavor i can't really describe it it's just it's such an amazing texture and if you heat them up in the microwave it is so good so I cannot stop talking about these things they're so good so go macro and then obviously the vega protein bars are so good also especially their caramel one cookies there are a lot of gluten-free cookies that are really good alive they're all really good, but my favorite is the Enjoy Life brand. And oh, what's this? Uh, coupon savings. Yes, please. Don't mind if I do. Oops. Just rip that. Hold. Rip that off. So Enjoy Life. These are the Snickerdoodle ones, but they've got chocolate chip and brownies and stuff like that. Enjoy Life is a great brand because they are allergy friendly. So Enjoy Life, um, like everything they make is going to be free of the major allergens. So it's an easy, you know that you can eat it kind of thing, which is great because you could 
don't have to spend like 10 minutes reading the ingredients unless you're allergic to more things like corn and stuff like that but it doesn't have corn so this one's good next is let's say you like cake how do you have gluten-free cake and a good gluten-free cake well betty crocker makes gluten-free cake mixes now and also brownie mixes and cookie mixes and all of that good stuff and all you have to do is add a can of soda pop, whatever carbonated beverage you want, and you have cake, and it's actually really good cake. Bob's Red Mill makes pancake mix, but they also make pizza crust that I find this, this one's really good. The other brand that I would recommend, it's called Namaste, and their pizza crust has like rosemary and oregano in it. It is so good, but you can do that with like a plain crust mix and just add seasonings. Bob's Red Mill also has their own uh, gluten-free cake mix. They also have brownie mix, biscuit mix, bread mix. All of Bob's Red Mill's like gluten-free mixes are really good, but let's say you wanna bake from scratch. So what are you gonna do? Again, we have Bob's Red Mill. This is the one-to-one -one baking flour, the gluten-free. And so it's an easy alternative. If the recipe says one cup of flour, one cup of this, it's one-to-one. -one. So it's equal parts if you're doing like an alternative or doing like substitutions. The other thing is maybe coconut flour. So I have some coconut flour here and some other flours that are really great. Brown rice flour. This is really good if you're like deep frying anything. All you have to do is add some water and make a paste and then batter whatever it is you're deep frying. So that's a really great alternative to like tempura batter or anything like that. But you can also bake with this or use it when you're rolling dough out as a way to make it not stick. This is great for that. The other thing is almond flour. I have some here. I discovered these recently when I wanted to make a pie. I needed a gluten-free pie crust, which Bob's Red Mill does make, and it's very good, but I was lazy and I didn't want to have to actually make it. So this is the Holy Wholesome Gluten-Free Pie Crust. It comes two in a package, so I still have one left over from the last time I made a pie. And one thing you can do with this pie crust, because it comes with two, you can actually use one as the actual shell, take the other one, break it up, and you can actually make like a crumbled pie crust on top if you're doing like a Dutch style pie, or you can do an open face pie or whatnot, whatever you want. So these are just like some of my favorite brand, gluten-free brands, and there are so many more if there is something that I missed and you're like, well, I like to eat blah, blah, blah. What is a good gluten-free option let me know because I know I didn't cover everything and if there's different brands that you like also let me know because I'm always into trying new things and I'd like more options so if you enjoyed this video if you found it helpful at all please give this video a thumbs up for more videos about food eating disorders eating disorder recovery diets and nutrition please subscribe and I will see you next time bye